You know, they say nine millimeter expands, but 45 never shrinks. We're gonna be talking about the Smith & Wesson 45 Shield. Finally, a non-mouse version of this gun. This is gonna be a lot of fun. All right, we're gonna have a great day here talking about the 45 Shield, but first let's sling a couple of more bowling balls out of this thing. Not too bad. This is a brand new gun from Smith & Wesson. Uh, I went into Big Woods Goods up in Canton, Georgia, put my hands on this thing, I liked it. Decided I wanted to check it out, pick it up. Um, I've shot it a pretty good bit, just trying to get used to it and everything, put quite a few rounds through it. Um, it's pretty much like the shield that you'd probably come to know and love. You know, they're available in nine, 40 caliber. This one's a 45. Uh, on this particular gun, one thing that they've done a lot different drastically that you see right out of the gate is the difference in the stippling on the grip. So it's a much more aggressive texture on the grip to give you a really strong purchase on the firearm when you're shooting it, uh, which is great. The sights and trigger mechs from everything I've been able to find out are compatible with the 9 and 40. So if you have an Apex trigger kit laying around for a 9, haven't gotten around to buying the gun, you can drop it in a 45 if you want and the same thing on the sights. The forward serrations are a really nice feature on this particular gun. That's something that you don't get on both the Performance Center and the standard 9 and 40 shields. Uh, I would imagine that eventually they will probably release a Performance Center version of this gun. Uh, Smith & Wesson has been known to do that. They'll release a gun and then, all right, it's cool, everything's going well for a while, and then they go, oh, let's come out with a Performance Center version. Uh, so I've got my wife's uh, Performance Center 9mm right here. It's a ported gun. Uh, high-vis fiber optic sights. We've already reviewed this gun, so if you want to check that review out, uh, go on over there and check it out if you're interested in a 9 instead. But the size comparison between these two guns is just so similar. Uh, the 45 is, you know, not really that much bigger than the 9, and it's really just the length. If you look and compare the height between the two, if I run a, a flush fit uh, mag in this 45, it's pretty much the same height uh, as a 9 millimeter with the extended magazine in it. So to give you an idea of height difference, that's definitely a height difference there. In terms of length, the 45 is considerably longer, I would say maybe a quarter inch uh, longer than the 9 millimeter. So you have a little bit more length to contend with. In terms of width, it's maybe just a little bit wider as well, obviously, because it is a 45. It's a big cartridge, so they had to make the gun a little bit wider. Uh, disassembly, takedown procedures, exactly the same as the shield, very easy to take apart. 3.3 um, inch barrel, so not really a terribly long barrel at all. It's a kind of a short stubby barrel, nice and rigid. Uh, this is a standard gun right out of the box. I haven't done anything to it. Uh, it's pretty much just been running along. Now, one weird thing is how they did these mags. I'm gonna bust a few of those soda bottles with a couple of carry loads. I got some Federal HST, 230 grain. We're gonna run a couple of these just for fun. All right, the way they did the mags is kind of strange. So. You get two mags with the gun, and I would assume probably just to make production easier and everything like that, they didn't want to go trying to make like two different mag bodies for the two different styles of floor plate. But by adding this extension on the bottom of the one, the grip extension, that's actually what gives you the plus one capabilities of this other magazine. So the, this magazine with the flat base will only hold six, even though it has plus one at the bottom, which I thought is kind of odd. You know, because here I was loading, like I'm going to load ball in this mag, right? So when I first got the gun, you know, here I am loading the mag. And I'm trying to stuff that last round in there. I'm thinking plus one. I can't get seven in there. But that's only with the extension on the bottom. With the flat base, you're not going to get that extra capacity. So right now we're at six. If I go, I can't stuff that last round in there. That's okay. You could still put six in the mag, one in the chamber, and you got seven in the gun. So with the plus one... Uh, the true plus one, I've got seven in the magazine and one in the chamber, which matches the capacity of a standard 1911 single stack. Uh, also, to compare size, I brought my other 
carry gun out. Uh, this is a gun that I carry all the time. This is my compact uh, MMP 45. And uh, this is the smallest 45 that you can get from Smith & Wesson. And for a long time, this has been my carry gun. But one thing you notice is with a flush fit mag and a double stack arrangement, I've got eight shots in the mag and one in the chamber makes nine. So I've only got one more round than I can get in the single stack shield in the smallest double stack gun that they make. Now granted, with the shield, uh, you know, you're kind of limited to a single stack magazine. Now obviously people are going to end up probably doing base plates and things like that. But for the purposes of this gun, you know, they make a 14 shot mag for this gun. So I'm still, you know, up on capacity in a double stack gun. So you're not really taken away from what a double stack can offer. And I've still got a nice compact size in the compact 45, uh, you know, M&P here. I've got DPU Trigicons on this, and this one does have an Apex trigger. In fact, Ray did all the work. Ray's here with us today. He's gonna be doing some shooting in this video as well. But just to show you size comparisons, you know, that's, that's a pretty stark difference in the size there between the double stack gun and the new 45 shield. Now, with that being said, does that mean that I wouldn't carry this gun anymore? Um, well, definitely not. I mean, I would still carry this pistol, no problem. Uh, but it is a larger gun by pretty strong margin than the 45 shield. We got an all-purpose carry holster. This was uh, uh, made by all-purpose carry. It's a custom holster. They make these while you wait. A uh, really great bunch of people to work with. My wife's holster here that she has her performance center in is a black point, and that's an inside the waistband black point holster, and she's been liking that a lot. Okay, without further ado, we're going to bust those soda bottles here, do a little bit more shooting. All right. All right, we got 230 grain standard pressure HST. We're going to run some hollow points to make sure this thing will run defensive ammo reliably. Oh, look, <laughs> I wounded him. Look at that. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's like Adam's family when they, uh, slice, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, what's her face? Oh God. What's that girl's name? Uh, oh, I can't remember her name. I'll think of it in a minute. She slices that guy's throat and it shoots that fake red blood out everywhere. There we go. Wednesday. Wednesday Adams, that was her name. Yeah. Uncle Fester's little niece as Wednesday Adams. All right. I knew I'd think of it. All right. Not too bad. All right. Wish I had a whole pile of magazines so I wouldn't have to keep loading. The gun handles nice, okay? You know, it, it fits my hand particularly well. And one thing that a lot of folks have said when it comes to handling this gun for the first time, you know, friends of mine that I've showed this to and stuff, they all mention like, wow, that's a really comfortable gun. Uh, your mileage may vary. <laughs> I would uh, encourage you to put your hands on it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. It's not a gun everybody's gonna like, but what gun is, right? Um, in terms of carry ammunition, I haven't really fired a ton of different hollow points out of this gun. Uh, we just ran some HST. The ammunition that you saw in the intro, that was some old Corbon I had laying around in a bin. I think it was like some 180 plus P Corbon, so it definitely smoked those water bottles. Oh, here I am trying to stuff another one. All right, let's shoot a few more, and then I've got some uh, Underwood Extreme Defenders we're going to run into some soda bottles. In fact, Ray is going to run into some soda bottles for you. All right, and the ammo we're running here, this is just uh, like regular old aluminum case, blazer, cheapo, 230 grain ball ammo. Oh yeah. Man, at combat ranges, you're not gonna be walking away from this thing. Favoring a little bit left for all of us so far. Again, this gun is straight out of the box. I have not adjusted the sights or anything like that. So it's gonna be a little bit of that to, you know, kind of contend with. Prior to making this video, we've probably ran collectively between all of us, eh, probably three or 400 rounds through the gun just to see if there's any gremlins that will uh, 
bring themselves about, but so far, nothing to really complain about. It's definitely accurate enough for carry work. I mean, uh, for combat distances, you're not gonna be trying to shoot tiny groups. I mean, you're gonna be trying to get the bad guy down. This is a great defensive gun. I can imagine this will just be a wonderful carry gun. Um, I haven't physically carried this gun a lot yet, but I intend to. Um, I've been carrying that, uh, that M&P pretty regular now for probably about eight or nine months straight. And uh, I have no uh, regrets or, or issues with it. I, I like it just plenty. But it is nice to have a gun that won't print quite as much, especially if I'm carrying that gun around with an eight-shot mag in it. Might as well have a slimmer gun that's a little bit easier to hide. You're a lot less likely to print. So I'm going to shoot these two mags, and then I'm going to shut up and uh, let Ray have a go and see what he thinks. I mean, short of one that I pulled just a little bit low and left, I mean, here at seven yards, I just stacked all of those shots like almost in the same hole there. I mean, how much more accurate does it need to be for defensive work? You know, most of your defensive situations are gonna involve seven to 10 yards anyway. So you should always get good with whatever gun you're gonna carry, get to where you can get it out of the holster and get that first round on target as quick as possible, because that's really where it's at. All right, uh, just for fun, a couple of shots out to 25, 75 yards here. See if we can connect with a few gongs. All right, that's 25. See about 35 yards. All right, that's 35 yards. Let's try 75 yards. All three of those rounds down there landed in about the size of a grapefruit at 75 yards. I mean, what more do you need out of a three, not even a three and a half inch barrel? So that's pretty cool. We're gonna reset the range and we're gonna get Ray in. You guys remember Ray from a lot of the earlier videos we used to make. He's hanging out here with us today. I'm very happy to have him here. So we're gonna get Ray in. He's gonna give some thoughts on the gun as well. Let's do it. Well, how's it going everybody? No, I haven't been on the channel much lately, but uh, I blame it on you guys. Uh, you keep sending me all this gun work in the shop and I have to stay there all the time. But I finally got away, left Ryan at the shop to take care of business while I come out here and play a little bit. And uh, Thankfully, Eric's uh, brought out some fun new toys. We got the uh, Smith & Wesson 45 Shield that I've been hankering to shoot. Uh, we've had a number of them in the store. Uh, I've sold about five or six of them, but yet to pull the trigger on them. So I'm gonna have at it. I like it, it looks good. The, uh, the grip definitely feels much better in the hand than the standard shields do. A Little bit better texture on it. Um, Size-wise though, almost no difference at all in the field. So I'm gonna grab a mag full of ball here and get a feel for it and then try some of these uh, underwoods and uh, see how they do as well. So let me give it a try and see how it goes. Not too bad. Definitely got a little bit of snap to it recoil wise, but to be expected in 45, Definitely a little hotter than the nine millimeter for sure. Let me load up another mag and see how it does. The trigger feel is just as good as the nine millimeter straight out of the box. Um, I'm sure that with a little bit of uh, work with some apex parts and a uh, little polishing, it could be extremely good. But for what it is, it makes for an excellent little carry rig. I love the size, it's nice and flat. So certainly pack away real nice in the inside the waistband type rig. Points nice and quick, I'll say that. Definitely has a really, really good pointability to it. I'm gonna try some of these Extreme Defenders. These are loaded by Underwood Ammunition with the Lehigh Extreme Defender projectiles. They are 1,420 feet per second, 120 grain, solid copper. Let's see what this thing will do to some of those soda bottles over there. Wow, those things are pretty intense. 
I'll say one thing, the recoil effect is not as bad as I would have expected. You do have to hang on, but, uh, and you hit somebody with that, they're not getting back up, I guarantee you that. So, try one more mag of these ball rounds. I'm gonna try that 75 yard target back there. You know, the magazines actually load pretty easy considering the bigger bullets definitely make them easier to handle. Not too bad, especially with my old eyes. That thing's pretty neat. I, uh, I really do like the size of it. It's so much more compact than the, uh, even the compact m and I like it a lot. I think that it's gonna do real well for Smith and I think with some a uh, little bit higher visibility sights, I could probably shoot it even better at distance. So looking forward to setting one of these up with some uh, HD night sights and giving it a try again. But uh, Eric, again, I appreciate being able to come out and shoot this. This was fun and uh, hopefully my two cents means a little bit. You guys have a good day. It's always awesome when we can have Ray on the channel. Definitely wanna say thanks to him for showing up and hanging out for a while. Uh, I don't get to have Ray on the videos as often as I would like, but I always appreciate his input. Uh, we're going to close things out here, do a little bit of shooting. Yes, Chad has shot the gun. Yes, Chad likes it. Go ahead, Chad. T say, you like it. I like it. Okay, there you go. There You got, you got Chad's uh, input there. All right, we're going to take a few more shots and close it out a little bit here. All right, I'm going to see if I can hit that popper twice before he falls. How about that? Got him. Now that's awesome. All right. Oop. Look at that. Sling them right in there. All right, a couple of rapid fire mags here. I'm going to try to pick up the pace and just lay some lead down here. Got to make up for all that dang talking I was doing earlier. So this is actually a very fun gun to shoot. You would think that it would be a little bit hard to shoot because it is kind of a lightweight gun. You know, you're taming a, uh, a relatively uh, powerful cartridge, but it's really not bad at all. Stick a fork in him. All right, one more mag, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut up here and let you guys get back to your day. But the gun's definitely been running nicely. I'm not complaining at all. Uh, time will tell. Like Ray said, we'll probably wind up getting some uh, night sights and you know aftermarket triggers that will surface and everything. I mean, if the compatibility that I've uh, discovered about the triggers and sights and everything is indeed true, which everything I've been able to find, it certainly is. Uh, if that is true, uh, we will certainly see uh, how that can matter with accuracy. And we might do some more formal accuracy testing in a future video. This video is uh, intended to be just kind of a first look. Just kind of have some fun with the gun. One more. Oh, I can't miss the last shot now. Uh-uh. No, we ain't having that. All right, I'm gonna dump one more magazine into this one target right here and just have a little fun. All right. Not too bad. I mean, the gun's definitely got it in terms of just it's hard to explain, but it, it just, it really does have that, that factor that you want in terms of a carry gun. Nice and compact, lightweight, easy enough to shoot. I mean, it is a 45. It's relatively light, so you do have to hang on to it. Uh, mags are reasonably easy to load. Gun's reasonably accurate. It's lightweight. Uh, one thing I didn't mention before that's probably important to talk about uh, that I forgot to, to mention is that it is available with and without a safety. This particular one is a non-safety model, so that might matter to uh, some of you. Uh, I tend to prefer a gun that does not have a manual safety, uh, but it just depends on what you like there. Overall, not bad. We'll see how it holds up. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time. Many more videos on the way. Hope you enjoyed today's video. More to come. We'll see you.